Now this car isn't just a restoration. Every once in a while I get to do something fun that is part of the, what I consider the innovative design of this build. And today is no exception. So if you hung around this long, you're gonna see something pretty cool. Welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we are going to put a door skin on this 1969 Porsche 911. Well, welcome back to the show. The last episode completely kicked my booty. Uh, I thought I was gonna just prime a couple of doors after stripping the paint and the hood did not at all turn out like that. It turned into a whole thing. I thought it was gonna take one afternoon. It took like 10 days. So for those of you that have been asking, where's the episode? That's what happened. Now, I have one door skin on the car. This door is on. I spent probably four or five hours working on gaps yesterday and I'll show you some of the technical stuff you have to do. Now I have to put the door skin on the other side and put the door on the car. If I can do that successfully, I will actually prime the hood and the doors and the front fenders and the rear deck lid again. But I need to get the door on first. I'm gonna take the lessons I learned yesterday and hopefully apply them today. And I can hopefully teach you guys how to do a door skin on a Porsche 911, which is not the easiest thing in the world. Before I get into the show, I wanted to know if any of you in viewer land, you are going to Luftgekult in Indianapolis. If you are going to Luft, put it down in the comments and I'm thinking maybe we can have a little wrench get together. We can have a little soiree. We can have a little meetup somewhere. So if a few of you guys are going to Luft, uh, put it... <coughs> so, if, so if a few of you are going, yeah. So if a few, come on, it's hard to say. So if a few of you guys are going to lift, put it down in the comments and we will connect. Let me show you guys right now the, let me show you guys right now the process of setting door gaps on this car and the kind of things we have to do. So let me show you guys right now the process of door gaps on this car. Now I'm not a door gap expert, but this one's getting pretty close. I've got a few things yet to do. But ideally we're looking for like this four millimeter gap and then the panels are really flush. To do that, you need to do a few different things. First of all, to adjust the fore and aft of the door, typically there are spacers that are underneath these hinges. And you can take the spacers out to move the door that way. And you can put more spacers in to move the door this way. If you run out of spacers to take out, which I did, you actually have to hit these hinges. They tell you with a piece of hardwood, so like the, literally from the factory manual, they tell you to put a big piece of hardwood right here and hit it with a sledgehammer so it moves the hinge forward a little bit. I actually had to do that as well as give the back edge more of a, a hammer than I had had before. I think maybe just the, the, uh, the gap itself, the skin that I put on, wasn't tight enough here. So I had to hammer that way on the edge of the door to get this gap at all. Next, you have to make sure that you put your latch panel on and your latch in the door. You can't do the gaps without doing that. You have to do that. And then finally, you need to look at the interface here between the fender and the door. Now I still have some dialing in to do on this one, but I actually had to weld, I'm not sure if you can see this, but I had to weld more material on the end of this thing and then grind it down to make this gap okay. Uh, I still have more grinding to do and you can see right here that this is too much of a gap. Once I start dialing the fenders in, I'm hoping that I can move the fender back and out a little bit and that will eliminate that gap. If it doesn't, that means I'm gonna have to weld up along this edge on the fender side and then file it down until the gap is the way it's supposed to be. 
This is not completely abnormal. Some people do this with actual like body filler. I'm gonna to try to do it in metal as much as I can. And then if I need to, I can use some of that fiberglass reinforced filler on the edge and really dial the gaps in. But this process of getting this door to fit the way it currently fits was hours. It was like four or five hours of fitment. And that is just part of the deal. Uh, the other thing you want to do, which I didn't do only because I don't have the, um, the window frame in there is they'll tell you to put your seal in the door as well. But if you're that close and you're getting just the gaps dialed within a couple of millimeters, then you may or may not need to do this. This is not fully tightened down. So like I can move this fender in a little bit and get this thing flush. But when the time comes, you know, everything, you literally have to put like every nut and bolt in every piece to make sure that you get the gaps perfectly sound. So because doing the gaps was so challenging yesterday, I'm gonna to try to do something a little different, which is I'm gonna bolt the inner door into the car. I'm gonna then put the door skin on and see if I can move it fore and aft until the gaps are right, and then try to weld it. I have no idea if that's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. All right, doors are off, hinges are off. I'm gonna clean these hinges up and these bolts, which are kind of rusty and they're covered with paint. So I'm gonna strip all the paint off of this stuff, get these bolts soaking in a little oil, and just make sure these things are all clean and dialed. All right, so what you're seeing here is the door internals now in place. And what I want to do now is see if I can somehow fit the door skin and get it oriented correctly before I weld it all in. All right, now that was a successful experiment. I got the door mostly assembled. The skin is literally just sitting on there and I can move it back and forth a few millimeters in each direction, which is exactly what I wanted to do because now I have a game plan. Now I know exactly what part of the inner door I need to shave down, how I need to prep it and everything I need to do I'm gonna mark everything up and make sure that it stays in the same spot and prep the inner door for welding. Hi, Ben. How you doing, bud? Were you taking a nap? You know Ben the dog. You guys remember Ben the dog? You guys know Ben. There he is. Anyway, basically I have to undo everything I just did to get the skin off and then get the inner prepared for welding. But that's gonna be super exciting. So I am going to do that and I think it's gonna be a lot less work than it was on the other side. All right, the lip is prepped. You just saw me punch a bunch of holes with my awesome little flanger hole puncher. All right, it is getting exciting here. Got the door prepped, got the door skin ready, got the welder ready. Let's put the door skin on. And the hope is to be able to tack the door skin in just two or three spots to secure the skin on the door then pull the whole thing off once again. Make sure that it's really tight. I get all the front side welded up 
and then I can start hammering the rear of the door to make sure that it's tight and it fits. But the hope is I get a much tighter fit this time than I did with the previous door and I have a little bit of wiggle room for the gaps. Awesome. Awesome. All right, good news. The gaps are pretty good. Like right out of the gates, I've got this perfect four millimeter gap here. We've got the bottom end sticking out, so I'm gonna rotate the hinge on this side and get this thing to flush. And I might boost it up a little bit, but super happy with how that looks. And yeah. So you've got a few spots to adjust the door gaps. Right now I need to kind of lift the whole door up and I want it to come, the bottom to come in a little bit. So these two bolts are the tight ones right now, just the two top ones. And with the help of this jack, I'm gonna to try to loosen the top one and then just move the door up a little bit and then the bottom hinge in just a little bit and see where we land. All right, dude, Lise, there you go. For now, that is really close. It's a little tight on the bottom, but not too bad, because I haven't even finished this yet. I haven't really done anything since I put the quarter panel on and did these rockers, so there's still plenty of work to do to get the gaps right, like on the car side itself. So I'm not super worried about it. I'm actually really happy with how this thing turned out. And for those of you that have hung around this long, I have a treat. Now this car isn't just a restoration. Every once in a while I get to do something fun that is part of the, what I consider the innovative design of this build. And today is no exception. So if you hung around this long, you're gonna see something pretty cool. Now there's a company called Lauren Teal. I've spoken about them earlier on this build. They make these really, really cool tail lights for Porsches that are based on modern LEDs. And if you guys remember the original design drawings of this car, I have a couple of ring LEDs as part of the design. So Nick and I have been working on a prototype of these really cool lights that will allow me to run just the rings on the outside of the car and then have everything look like it's emerging from the back end of the car. We just got the first ones 3D printed and I have them set up on the car to demo. Let me show you right now. So we live in this really cool era where you can design something in 3D software, send it off on the internets, 
and then get back a laser cut version in metal of the thing that you designed. So what this is, is a metal piece that's meant to wrap around these LED lights. And this is what it looks like on the car, very loosely fitting. But look how badass these lights are. This is a red and amber, it can be red and red. And the idea is here is that you see this piece of metal. This piece of metal will be welded and body finished into the car so that just these round lights are sticking out of, you know, the painted car. But isn't that bitchin? Imagine your turn signals and your lights and you get to see this really cool red or amber or whatever color I decide to go with. But isn't that rad? So cool, 3D printed, every bit of this thing is 3D printed. So there's a bracket on the inside. In fact, I can take this off. In fact, the 3D print broke. But you can see there's a, a bracket. Uh, there's a bracket on the inside and then these pods basically screw into the 3D printed piece. Really rad. So that's how they look. And I can't wait to get them all fitted up into the car. Hey, look guys, we got some new doors. The doors are totally set and skinned. I'm so excited. What do you think there, Ben? Pretty good looking doors, huh? That was a good episode. Much more positive and, and, uh, and progressive than the last one. Let's get some of this stuff in primer on this next episode, eh? All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that episode in the door skinning process. In retrospect, would I do it again? Ah, I don't know, but now I know how to do it. Just another one of those things on this build that I've never done before that came out okay, and I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's painted. As always, love you guys, thanks for watching. Send me any comments you like down there, and if you're brand new to the channel, hit subscribe, and it's tradition around this place to throw a high five in the comments and tell me where you're from, all right? So if you haven't done that already, tell me now, and uh, we'll see you next time.